Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at how to derive the equation of an electric field line. Now, this is something that I find quite interesting, partially because it's something that doesn't tend to get emphasized so much in physics courses. Like we tend to spend a lot of time learning how to calculate electric field vectors, and then we get shown representations of those electric fields um, in diagrams like this one at the bottom left, which is showing the field lines of an electric dipole. But what you might not have seen before is how to actually calculate either the polar equation or the Cartesian equation of a single electric field line. And so in this video, we're going to take the specific example of uh, an electric dipole. And so the electric field of a dipole is given up at the top left here in, uh, in polar coordinates r and theta. Um, the derivation of that, I have another video deriving that. Um, but the method that we're going to look at in this video is definitely generalizable uh, to any electric field. So what we're going to do is firstly think about what an electric field line actually is. And essentially it's just a line uh, which always points in the direction of the electric field um, at each point along that line, right? Or to put it in another, uh, in another way, if we look at any point along an electric field line, the electric field vector at that point is a tangent to that field line. And that fact is what we're going to use as the basis of uh, our method for finding the equation of a field line. So what we're going to do is consider a specific field line. Uh, let's look at this one over here uh, and think about two points on that field line. Uh, so let's put a little dot there to be point one and another dot there to be point two. And our dipole is down at the bottom here um, at the origin of the coordinate system. Okay, so that's the origin center of this diagram, I'm going to draw lines from the origin to those two points on the field line, right? So um, first one is just going to look like that. And the second one is going to look like that. And so the idea is, we could put a little vector going between point one and point two, right? But we could also split that vector into components along the radial uh, and kind of angular directions, right? In other words, in the in the r direction and the theta direction. So we've got our little displacement vector there, but let's split that up. It's going to have some component in that direction, right? Which is the r, I guess it's the, the r hat direction, right? Radial unit vector. And then it's going to have some component in this direction, which is the, uh, the theta hat direction. And um, we could call this displacement in the r hat direction dr, and we could call this displacement in the theta hat direction, um, r d theta. So we've multiplied by r, which is just um, the the radius uh, at this starting point. We've multiplied by r to convert our angular uh, uh, displacement into a linear displacement, right? And we're also we're assuming these two points are very very close together in doing this. All right, so let's also draw on our electric field. Now we said the electric field is a tangent to the electric field line at any given point. And so the electric field um, at point one is going to look something like this, right? It's just tangents to that black curve. And so here is our electric field vector. Again, we can split it into r and theta components. So it's going to have an r component like this. And it's also going to have a theta component, something like this, right? So that is going to be Let's call it E subscript R for the radial component. And this part is going to be E subscript theta for the component in the theta hat direction. Now, let's think about what happens as you bring these two points, one and two, closer and closer together. You can see that the, the little red vector, the displacement vector between the two points, is going to become more and more closely aligned with the electric field vector, right? Because the electric field vector is a tangent. And so in the limiting case where those two points get closer and closer together, we have two similar triangles. This red, the, the, the red dashed lines form one triangle and the blue dashed lines form another triangle. And they're going to be similar um, if uh, the electric field and this little red displacement vector are parallel. And so using similar triangles, let's just write that down. So using similar triangles, what we can say is, um, the ratio of sides in the red triangle is the same as the ratio of sides in the blue triangle. Uh, the ratio of sides in the red triangle is R 
d theta divided by dr, the equivalent ratio of sides in the blue triangle is e subscript theta over e subscript r. And so this actually gives us a, a generic differential equation to solve. If we can solve this differential equation for theta as a function of r or r as a function of theta, um, then that is just the equation of our field line, right? And so let's solve this in the specific case of an electric dipole because we know e theta and er in that case, right? So for a dipole, okay, um, we can say that r d theta by dr r d theta by r dr. So e theta is this component here up at the top left, <clears throat> and so that is just sine theta, and er is that component there up at the top left, which is two cos theta. Okay. Um, so let's just solve this first order uh, differential equation. Um, it's a separable differential equation, so we can put all the r's on one side and all of the thetas on the other side. And so let's multiply up by two cos theta over sine theta. And so we're going to get two cos theta over sine theta d theta. And then we can also uh, multiply both sides by dr over r. So the other side of the equation would just be dr over r. And then we can integrate both of those sides to solve this differential equation. Um, right now, what we get uh, is, if you think about cos theta over sine theta, um, because cos theta is the derivative of sine theta, we've got a derivative over a function which gives us the natural log of the function, or the natural log of the modulus of the function on the denominator, right? So the left-hand side is twice the natural log of the modulus of sine theta. The right-hand side is the natural log of the modulus of r, and then we get a constant of integration. Right, so what we can do is a couple of simplifications. Um, so firstly, um, we can take this two in front of the natural log, and raise the sine theta inside inside the natural log to that power. Okay, so let's take that two and um, put it, I guess, here, right? But um, that what that means is because when we square sine theta, it's positive anyway, we can just get rid of those modulus signs. Okay, and so we get natural log of sine squared theta. And again, by definition, r is just the radius in spherical polar coordinates, which is always positive by definition, right? And so actually we don't need those modular signs. We can just write natural log of r plus a constant. Then let's exponentiate both sides. And so the left-hand side just becomes sine squared theta. The right-hand side becomes, um, well, it's going to be e to the linear plus c but then we can separate that out into e to the linear times e to the c, okay? So we've, because we had um, two terms added together in the exponent, we end up multiplying, uh, multiplying two exponential terms together. And so finally, because e to the natural log of r is just r, we find that our equation of that field line is r is equal to, let's say some constant a times sine squared theta, where I've defined this new constant a to be e to the power of minus c. So there we go. Any um, field line for an electric dipole takes the form uh, r is a sine squared theta. And the different field lines, you just get them by changing the value of r. So each, va sorry, changing the value of a. So um, each field line that you see on this diagram corresponds to a particular value of a.